Mirch. You are listening to the Immigration Hour on Mirchi, brought to you by Nockman Fulwani Zimovchek, NPZ Law Group, the preeminent international immigration and nationality law firm, at your service in New York, New Jersey, Indiana, Florida, Canada, and India. And joining me is Nehal Batra, managing attorney at NPZ's Raritan office. Nehal, welcome. Hi, Vijaya. Thank you so much. And. Happy New Year to you and to our listeners. Happy 2024. Yes, happy 2024 and very happy New Year to you. Uh, Snehal, a question about selective service. What is it and will my U.S. citizenship application be denied because I didn't register for selective service? Yeah, sure. So possibly, you know, failing to register for a selective service, uh, it could create a problem for some people applying for citizenship. It depends on your age. But before we get into that, let me explain what is selective service. Okay, so um, in America, we don't have a drafted military. It's completely yeah. voluntary, right? Mm-hmm. But the government, the U.S. government does require men, uh, not women, but men to register with selective service when they turn 18 years old. And they can register until they turn 26 years old. Mm-hmm. By registering, you're not joining the U.S. military. The Selective Service, they maintain a list of all these names in case there is a national emergency that requires the government to, you know, expand the U.S. Armed Forces. So that's all it is. Okay, you're not enlisting yourself yeah. uh, to join. Thank God. But <laughs> this, this requirement to register for Selective Service applies to men who are between 18 and 26 years old, mm-hmm. um, who are U.S. citizens, green card holders, refugees, asylees, even undocumented people, including Uh our DACA recipients. Mm -hmm. What's interesting is that registering for selective service doesn't apply if you're in the U.S. on a non-immigrant status. So if you are working on H-1B or on a student visa, L-1 visa, you don't have to worry about registering if you're between 18 and 26. Uh Why? Because these are temporary visas. They are not immigrants. They are just in the U.S. for a temporary period of time. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's what this whole selective system registration means. So again, if you're, let's say, on an H-1B, you're maybe 24 years old and you don't have to worry, but then let's say you get married mm-hmm. and now you get a green card yeah. and you're 25 years old. So now you do have to register for our selective service because you're still under 26 years old. Mm-hmm. Now, if you didn't register during this period of time yeah. and you are over 26 years old and you can't register anymore, okay, this could be a problem when you're applying for your naturalization application because mm-hmm. you have to uh, demonstrate good moral character. We've talked about this in previous uh, shows. Right. And if you don't register, the immigration service um, says that you don't qualify for uh, you don't meet the good moral character requirement. Okay, because part of the naturalization oath is that you have to be willing to bear arms for the U.S. and attach to the principles of the U.S. Constitution and government. Mm -hmm. So if you um, didn't register and you want to apply for U.S. citizenship, if you are under 26 years old, register for selective service. That solves the problem. You go online, you just register, you're done, okay? Mm -hmm. But let's say you um, are over 26 and you can't register anymore, but you want to apply for naturalization, Mm -hmm. okay? So you have to show that you didn't know about registering for selective service. It was an innocent mistake, Okay. okay, that it was not willful Mm -hmm. or intentional like you didn't purposely not register because you didn't want to you know register for selective service you just didn't know about it Mm -hmm. so you have to provide them with evidence so you go on to the selective service website you put in your information and it'll tell you yes you did not register but based on all of your um you know your facts because you were unaware this is not Mm -hmm. information that's readily available okay Mm -hmm. Um, You also should provide a signed statement explaining the circumstances that, you know, you didn't intend to um, mislead or not register. You believe in the principle of the Constitution. And 
it's probably not a bad idea to have another statement from like a pastor that oh, can also yeah. confirm that you know did you had you known about it you would have because you are a person of good character oh, okay. you know you support the u.s constitution and then in those types of cases we have been successful in getting individuals naturalized yeah. so you really need to uh, you know just make sure you have the appropriate information mm -hmm. now if you're over 31 and you're applying for naturalization and you never registered mm -hmm. it's not a problem because mm -hmm. the good moral character statutory period like the look back period is five years oh so yeah. once you pass you know five years from turning 26 mm -hmm. They're not going to look back prior to that because, again, the good moral character, five-year period. So you shouldn't really have any issues. Wow, that who knew the, the good moral therapy. character has a... <laughs> so this is not a really complicated issue, but it is important to understand your obligations and make sure mm -hmm. that, you know, you do what you're supposed to do. So uh, ultimately, um, reach out to us and we can help you navigate uh, getting you the right information and documentation so you can successfully become a U.S. citizen. Yes, absolutely. And thank you, Snehal, for that insight. That also...